BBS. BBS. Black Burke Sugar, Bachelor's in Boxing Studies. Television! Fred Sanford of the Fisher Arts. When all is said and done, there's nothing left to say or do. Read BBS. BBS. Talking about Saturday, July 20th. Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. Respectfully, Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. The promotion itself is titled Paul versus Tyson, but fuck that. That's a, that's a slap in the face. It's Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul, goddammit. Fuck that, and fuck this event, really. I'm getting weird-ass vibes from all of this, and I have from day one. And not a curious, weird, not a curiosity weird either. Not entirely. I mean, I, I do want to know what happens at the ding of the first bell. I want to know wh what's going to happen, how it's going to unfold, and what's going to unfold. But just like about everyone else, I'm, I'm smelling, I'm smelling scripted, weird, uh, like a WWE written, executed, and performed wrestling script. That's what I'm smelling here, man. Predetermined, if you will. If you will. His Excellency Turkey Allah Sheik can't even smell the bullshit all the way from Saudi Arabia. Publicly pleading with Mike Tyson not, I repeat, not to follow the script. Tyson, Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul will be broadcast live on Netflix. All you need is a Netflix subscription if you didn't already have one, apparently. No pay-per-view, no additional price points beyond the subscription. <clears throat> the zone, the zone. But that's, that's fishy as fuck uh, in and of itself. You got a cash cow, you got a gold mine of an opportunity, a certified financial windfall, Tyson versus Jake Paul, that's marquee as fuck, yet you're not milking every last dollar out of this via pay-per-view? Hmm, okay. With that, Tyson versus Jake Paul has already, already broken the Texas State live gate and attendance record for a combative sporting event be it boxing or MMA, like already two months in advance of the event. On the undercard, got a pretty decent undercard, admittedly. Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano, too. The most anticipated rematch in the history of women's boxing. A rematch of one of the best fights in the history of women's boxing. Ring Magazine Fight of the Year. And it headlined and sold out, and sold out, at Madison Square Garden of all places, no less, for the undisputed super lightweight championship of the world. Also on the undercard, we got H2O Sylvie versus Kid Austin, Floyd Schofield. Uh, we got Chavez Jr. and his dope smoking ass. He'll be facing Darren Till, who uh, formerly of UFC, Darren Till, making his boxing debut. But getting back to Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. Mike, uh, he's never been one to allow dudes to get terribly close to him. Not opponents, not in fight settings, and certainly not without consequence for damn sure. So through all the buildups and shit of this fight, the lack of security has been telling to me. Like, you got one dude standing between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, uh, there's promos where no one is standing between them. You got Jake doing bow and arrow and gunshot gestures at Mike. Mike giving off an air of not taking Jake the least bit seriously, which in all, for all intents and purposes, he shouldn't. But in the past, even in those instances, Mike wasn't feeling that shit, man. Mike was never nice, laughing and joking and shit at the pressers. Uh, it's weird as fuck, bruh. It's weird as fuck. He's going he's gonna to have to uh, literally weed off of the weed, which should not help his attitude. That should make Mike uh, a little bit more grumpy. Uh, he probably can't take his Zoloft either for the fight, which will get him to that point where he'd be ready to kill a motherfucker. But we're not seeing that vibe. We're seeing him poke Jake in his belly and shit. Now, the presser was mildly 
mildly entertaining, nothing worth rewatching, but it was kind of funny. The chorus of booze that Jake Paul got. He was telling Dallas to shut the fuck up. There were fuck Jake Paul, fuck Jake Paul chants. Jake was calling the crowd a bunch of bitches and hillbillies, telling them to go milk a cow. Y'all keep booing, I keep doing. Uh, Jake, of course, got his fucking start on a Tyson undercard. The Tyson Roy Jones exhibition, in fact, where Jake beat the shit out of Nate Robinson and stretched his ass. But as Mike put it, I started Jake off and I'm going to finish him to the uh, roar of the press conference crowd. So, yeah, uh, with that, Mike sitting there rocking a let's fucking go promo shirt. Then we hear about his health scare last weekend, just before Memorial Day on a cross country flight believe it was LA to Miami or vice versa. Paramedics had to come aboard and administer aid to Mike Tyson, who's got a fucking fight coming up in July, really. 57, soon to be 58-year-old Mike Tyson versus a 27-year-old. And there's a 30-year age difference. Sure, sure, why not? Fuck it, why not? Speaking of weird, eight two-minute rounds. Two-minute rounds. So what is this? Women's boxing now? Is this a women's event with dudes in it? You're fighting under women's rules? Uh, y'all gonna wear the fucking halter tops and shit too, the sports bras while you're at it? A professional boxing round consisting of two male combatants is three fucking minutes. So miss me with this two-minute bullshit. Mathematically and categorically, it cannot count as a legitimate sanctioned boxing match which makes the proceedings bizarre as fuck to me, to put it mildly. And I ain't, I ain't even mentioned the 14-ounce gloves. Like, really? Like, what? Huh? A sanctioned heavyweight boxing match uses 10-ounce gloves. Period. Period. I don't know what the fuck this is. I have no fucking clue what the fuck this is, dog. And then there's the recent Carl Frotch quote, former super middleweight champion and British boxing commentator these days and I quote from Frotch from what I'm hearing with the contracts allegedly he gets paid less if he wins in round one Tyson or if he gets a knockout he gets paid even less there's restrictions in his contract based on how he wins I don't know if it's been confirmed but I've read somewhere that there's a clause in his contract that means he's going to earn less money he goes out there and destroys Jake Paul. For what it's worth, Evander Real Deal Holyfield, when asked his uh, prediction, said, I don't know. It all depends on how Jake fights. The point of the matter is whether Jake Paul takes a good shot. I have never seen him get hit by anybody. But you never know. Mike might just quit in the ring and sit down and say, I'm done. So, yeah. Even uh, Holyfield is not optimistic about this, man. It just all makes for a, a very nasty mix, man. A mix that I just can't trust. My sports gut, my boxing gut just can't trust this shit. I can't get around it. I don't even know. Hell, the shit's in my backyard in Texas. I don't even know if I'm going to apply for a credential for this shit. If I even want to attend it, even if I'm allowed in for free. That, that's that's where I'm at with this, man. It's just, I, I don't know. You tell me. What kind of vibes are you getting from this shit? You let me know. Subscribe, comment. Remember, sharing is caring. Love tap and or, I'm giving you a choice, and or, bitch slap that like button for your boy. And shout out to the homies at fightbeat.com. Can you step to this? Read BBS. BBS. Black Burp Sugar. Bachelors in Boxing Studies. Television. Fred Sanford of the Fistic Arts. When all is said and done, there's nothing left to say or do.